Hello, today we're looking at the uses of nuclear radiation and in particular we're going to look at the uses in medical diagnosis and treatment. So it's in medical diagnosis and treatment and when we're thinking about the types of radiation or the types of nuclear radiation we use for uh, treatment and diagnosis there's three things we have to generally think about in terms of the source that we're using. The first thing is the half-life of that radioactive source Second thing is the ionizing power of that source. And the third thing is the penetrating power or the penetration power, how far it can penetrate into or out of the body. Let's tidy that up a little bit. There we go. So the first thing we can look at is this idea of half-life and we can remind ourselves of half-life. We've looked at it before, but this was the definition. It's the mean time taken for the count rate or activity of a sample containing a radioactive uh, isotope to fall to half of its initial level. Now we can simplify that and just call it the time for the radioactivity to reduce to safe levels. That's not the definition we would use, but that's we, that's the understanding we would use for this video. Okay, so this is number one, the half-life. In terms of the ionizing power and the penetration power, or the penetrating power, we need to remind ourselves of the features of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So let's do that now. Here we've got alpha, beta, and gamma. And along the top of this table, we can put ionizing power and penetration power, or penetrating power. And just as a reminder, uh, alpha radiation has a very high ionizing power and a very low penetrating power. It's stopped by skin. Beta tends to be more in the middle level for penetration and ionizing power. It can be stopped by tin foil. Gamma, however, has a very low ionizing power and a very high penetration power. It might be worth just pausing here for a moment just to remember this from our previous video because this is going to be useful for the work or the stuff we're going to look at now. Now the first thing we're going to look at is the use of radioactive substances as tracers and we're going to pick one particular example to see how it works. So firstly iodine is a substance that's needed for a healthy thyroid gland. You may remember the use of the thyroid in metabolism from biology if you do biology but Sometimes the thyroid gland does not absorb the iodine in the diet, which means it cannot function properly. So what happens is we we have a patient and the patient takes a drink containing radioactive iodine, which is the tracer. And after we've allowed, allowed a little time for the iodine to travel around in the blood to the thyroid gland, we get an image with a gamma camera. And in this case, you can see there is gamma radiation being given off where the thyroid gland is, which means that the iodine, the radioactive iodine, has been absorbed by the thyroid gland, and so this is not an issue with this patient. Another patient, we might see something like this, where the radioactive iodine has not gathered or accumulated at the thyroid gland, and therefore we can assume there is some issue with the thyroid gland absorbing iodine. So this is the patient here, the second one. This is the patient that we might need to offer some treatment in order to deal with the issue of the thyroid gland. Okay, so this is just one example of how uh, nuclear radiation might be used as a tracer or, or radioactive materials might be used as a tracer. The key thing here though is we use gamma radiation that can penetrate and leave the body with a, with a low half-life, which means the radiation will reduce to safe levels in a very short amount of time. Here is a second use. This time it's for destroying certain body cells or body tissue. And that and the example there is that of a tumor. This one's located in the brain. And so we can fire gamma radiation at this tumor, which will destroy the cells. The only problem is it might destroy other cells. But if that radioactive source is rotated around the tumor, the surrounding tissue will only get a low dose and the tumor will get the high concentrated dose. And that will allow the tumor to either reduce or be destroyed. And this can be followed up by an operation either to remove the tumor or further radiotherapy. A second way we could use this is not by actually rotating the radioactive source, but actually having radi the radioactive source pointed from three different directions or several different directions. You can see the tumor gets a high dose of that radiation, whereas the surrounding tissue only gets a low dose, and so it's much safer for the surrounding tissue. So we can make a little note of that. So here's the second method we looked at. We've got radioactive, a radioactive source firing gamma rays at the tumor, and we can see that those green parts there have low exposure to the gamma radiation, whereas the tumor itself, because it's being fired at from three different positions, and the gamma radiation meets at the position where the tumor is, that's where we have a higher exposure to gamma radiation. 
And because of this, the tumor will either be destroyed or it will be reduced in size and that can allow for further treatment. Okay, so this is the second use of nuclear radiation. We use gamma radiation, obviously, because it needs to penetrate past the skull into the brain tissue and into the tumor. Alpha and gamma would not only be dangerous, but they would not be able to uh, penetrate the skull. Okay, so here is a summary of the features of a radioactive source needed for medical diagnosis. First thing is that the half-life should be short, a few hours maximum, and the reason for that is so that there is less damage to body tissue and in order to minimize the dose. The second uh, one is a low ionizing power, so less again, less damage is done to body tissue. And then the third and final one is also having higher penetrating power, or in fact, we could say it's gamma radiation so that it can either be detected outside of the body if we're using it for diagnosis, which is what the question is asking actually here. But if it was being used for treatment, it would be so that it could penetrate into the body so that it could get to the tissue that it's trying to treat. And the most common example of that is treating cancer cells or tumor cells in the body that are either hard to reach or might be spread out a little bit and hard to operate on. Okay, so this is the idea of the uses of nuclear radiation in medicine, uh, either for diagnosis or for treatment, and probably worth looking over one more time, one or two more times if you need to. But if not, that's it for the video today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.